Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I've got in front of me is one of the Landsknecht Ogres from Wargames Atlantic and what an odd, <laughs> what a really weird kit it is. I love it to bits, but it's absolutely mad. It is literally Landsknecht Ogres. It's big puffy sleeves, uh, pie hats, all of this carry on with era appropriate equipment. So if you're looking at doing something for Warhammer, maybe you need a, an ogre mercenary or something, I, I would hesitate to come up with the number of ways you could put this kit to use. Now it's also got helmets and uh, automatic weapons and what have you. So if you want to do funky looking ogres with machine guns and such, you can also do that. There are some really good examples on the Wargames Atlantic website and I'll make sure that you get a chance to look at those. I'll pop up some links in the description. So today I painted something really for myself. Um, there's not a lot here that you might not have seen before, but I had a lot of fun. So I've gone ahead and recorded myself anyway. <laughs> All of the paints will be listed in the description below, same as always. So let's get started. So we have our assembled ogre. And the first thing to do, as always, is to prime him. Now, in this case, I've used Zandri Dust. And the reason for this is that I want a nice mid-tone brown in the recesses. If I were to go any darker, then when we apply the contrast over the top, uh, anything in the recesses is just going to look brown. Versus Zandri Dust, where it's more of a sandy color, and it's just light enough that the contrast which goes over the top is still going to tint those recesses enough. They'll look dark, uh, but they will carry a little bit of the color that we're going to apply over the top without having to worry about shading and all that sort of carry on. So Zandri Dust is my go-to in that respect, but you could use something lighter, even Skeleton Bone or similar from the Army Painter. It's up to you. Uh, experimenting with your primers is part of the fun of this particular method. Now you'll also see I've been clutching one of my little makeup brushes here. This is the Lux Smoky Shader. And it doesn't matter too much. Just anything nice and big, relatively soft. What we're going to do is apply our mid-tone over all of the miniature. Now I'm using here Tyrant Skull, uh, but you could use oh, all sorts of things. Ushabti Bone, you could use Phileo's Dark Sand. There isn't a correct answer. We just want a middling sandy color here. Now this is a little bit different from most dry brushing because instead of just catching the edges, what I really want to do is make most of the miniature uh, Tyrant Skull, in this case, and leave just a little bit of the Zandri Dust in the recesses. Uh, so this is really more like overbrushing than it is true dry brushing. So be generous, uh, but all the same, you don't want very much on your brush as you start because you want to be able to build that color up by passing over the area a few times and keep your Zandri Dust in the recesses. So over the entire miniature, I'm probably going to need to get a little bit more fresh paint intermittently. Once it's had a little bit of time to dry and settle, because while Tyrant Skull is a dry paint, it still needs to physically dry to the model. So don't go, don't go crazy with it straight after you've applied it. What I'm going to do next is dry brush a white, but concentrating on areas that the light is going to hit first. So think about the direction your light's going to be coming from. Uh, I am going to paint this fella as though it's sun up. So I've got some off-white here from Vallejo, and I'm going to very lightly dry brush now. This time, we're doing a more traditional dry brush. I just want to catch the edges. So edges of his hat, the tops of his sleeves and his hands, so that when we apply the contrast over the top of this, we're going to get a slightly lighter highlight on areas that the light is going to catch. So on the tops of his trousers here, and I'll stop once I get to about there. And now, while you'll see I have concentrated on lighting him from above, I have done a little bit of that white on everything, using it as a final dry brush to get a nice sharp white on all the parts I want the contrast to really highlight for us. So now we're going to paint him much the same as we would anything else. So I've got my Gilliman flesh, and I'm going to start with a skin. When it comes to beards and what have you, just go straight over the top of them. And uh, if you do end up putting any on a moustache or a beard or what have you, make sure you paint in the whole lot with the skin color too, because we can go over this later with a different color, uh, but you will find it easier 
if the whole face and beard and what have you, you're working from the same base coat, essentially. Now, there is a handsome chap. What I'm going to do is that he's got these big puffy sleeves and then this leather doublet sort of thing he'd be wearing underneath or over the sleeves. You can see he's got a shirt poking up through the top here. The shirt that he's wearing closest to his body, I'm actually not going to touch with any contrast at all. I'm quite happy to leave that as it is. Uh, but the doublet, what I've got, this is Garagak's sewer. And you'll see the one part I'm not fussed about hitting is going to be the uh, chest plate that he's wearing. Now, in hindsight, that is probably a little bit darker than I might have liked. Uh, I'm not too fussed. I'll stick with that. But uh, yeah, maybe thin it out if you're going to give that a shot yourself. What I've got next, this is snake bite leather. And wouldn't you know it, we're going to apply this to the leather bits. So the straps that are holding on his uh, chest piece. And I'm going to use the same color to paint in his belt. And I'll also use this on the leather wrap around his sword. And then I'm going to use wildwood on his hat. Now here I've got Gore Grunter fur, and I'm going to apply this carefully but fairly liberally over his pistol. And at this point, can you tell that I am uh, deliberately finding ways to avoid picking what colors I need to use for his clothes? Because I have no idea yet. Uh, what color I want to do them. Now the top section here obviously is going to be metal later, so as always anywhere that is going to be painted with a traditional acrylic you can be quite messy over. You don't have to worry about splattering it in contrast, so splatter we will. Now I remembered in the last that his cod piece would actually be a separate piece of leather to his trousers, so I've gone with a little bit of wildwood over the top of that. I've also figured out what I'm going to do for his colors. I'm going to paint him up like the old Empire State of Ostermark. So what I have, this is Volupus Pink. Now this is going to look, I mean, it is a pink, it's not truly a purple, uh, but Ostermark's little entry in the uniform book points out that because you know, purple is quite an expensive dye to make, it's difficult to create, and every soldier ends up with a slightly different uniform as this fades. So I figure particularly in the case of ogres, who aren't likely to be priorities for the most expensive kit, um, a slightly faded finish here will work quite nicely for this purple. Uh, I'd also recommend, I wish I had Sigvold Burgundy. That would probably look pretty cool as well. Uh, but you'll see that Volupus Pink, the way that we have prepared this miniature, it doesn't look so much pink as it does a nice rich purple. Now, rather than painstakingly painting that pink into all of the slashes, um, not all slashes and so-called pinks in clothing actually went through to a second color. So to keep this nice and simple, I've just painted a little bit of that Volupus pink into these cuts on his uh, thigh. The rest I'm not going to worry about. We are going to paint it in as yellow. So here I have Iand in yellow. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take my time going around these bits. But otherwise, just start applying it over all of the yellow bits. Now up on the sleeve, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave these white pieces intact or if I will shade over them later with the, uh, with the yellow. I'm kind of liking how it looks now though, so I'm going to finish off the rest of the miniature and then decide if I'm going to keep it like that. What I have is Skeleton Horde, and I'm just going to put this over the... Uh, taper on his matchlock. Now what I'm going to do on his feather up here is get a little bit of gut ripper flesh and I'm going to start a little bit down from the tip and apply this so that it looks as though we've got a, a few different colors on this feather. Now gut ripper flesh make sure you do shake the absolute dickens out of it because it's one of those quite pale ones that will have a, a white sediment at the bottom of the bottle if you're not mindful of it. So I'm going to go to about there and then stop. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of Baal Red at the bottom. Um, honestly, I'm just going with what looks cool here. If you wanted to mimic a particular bird's uh, feathers, it's all sorts of references online, and it's as easy as just letting one layer of contrast dry and getting in there with a second one. 
Okay, and now the last of the contrast colors I'm going to apply is some Black Legion. I'm going to blast this fairly generously over his uh, beard. And I'm also going to use it to paint in the grip on his sword. But I'll need a little bit more on my brush, obviously, for that. And now at last we can start getting to some of the traditional acrylics. What I've got here is Iron Hand Steel. And I'm going to paint in pretty much all of the metal on them with this, with just a couple of exceptions for some gold later. Now, I'm using this because it's nice and bright, covers fairly well, and once we shade it, we're not going to have to highlight it unless we really want to. So away we go. You'll find this uh, does cover quite well over this fairly light base coat, but if you do need to come back and give it a second coat to make sure it's nice and solid, it's not a huge amount of extra work to do. Okay, and then a couple of little details with some Retributor armor. Now, the reason why I'm going to paint his belt buckle in this is that with it sitting right next to his armor, I think it would be, well, boring <laughs> to paint that silver as well. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also paint in the, you know what I am, I'm going to paint in the little holdy doublers on his pistol, and also some bits of a sword. And then finally, it's time to shade those metal bits. Now on his gun as well, I am going to shade in the wood too. And for all of this, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. Now, I'm using the new one because that's what you're most likely to find when you go to the store. So over all of his pistol, his breastplate and what have you, let's go with some of this. When you're applying it, try and keep your brush moving in the same direction. As you'll find it collects just a little more naturally if you go about it that way. There we go, that's a little more interesting. What I'm going to do now is get some Screaming Skull, and I'm going to paint in his toenails. As well, I'll also paint in his teeth, but I am going to do that bit off screen. Uh, this is pretty handy because you can leave a little bit of the uh, shaded uh, flesh tone around the edges, and it won't look out of place, so you don't have to overdo the toenails. Now you might see I cheated off screen and I did paint in his eyes as well at the same time. And just a little bit of that screaming skull and then some Black Legion dotted in there will do the job. What I've got now is a tiny wee bit of Dawnstone just on one of my scraggy little dry brushes. Just to pick out his beard because I think it's going to look a little more interesting. If you can actually see that it has some detail there. And once I'm finished with this what I'm going to do is hit him with a matte varnish. Because uh, particularly with contrast, you want to make sure that you are protecting your work. Contrast will wear off uh, if you are touching miniatures all the time, so varnish is a good plan. And it also brings together a lot of the detailing that we've done. So what I'm going to do is varnish him, I'm going to use a mat, and uh, pop a base on. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And so there at last our Landsknecht Ogre is complete. And one thing that I actually forgot to do on screen was you'll probably notice that there is a very light dry brush. Um, I put a little bit of Tyrant Skull, just a tiny wee whisper of it, into an old brush. And you can see I've dry brushed things like the yellow, his uh, leather and what have you. Uh, quite honestly slipped my mind to demonstrate that, but it's dry brushing. So I think you've probably seen me do that before. <laughs> so thank you again to Wargames Atlantic for letting me have a play with the kits. I can't really say how much fun it is to do something. Honestly, I would I would very rarely have a use for myself. It's so far out of my wheelhouse that I don't think I'd ordinarily pick up something like this, but I'm super glad that I now have one. And uh, the rest of the kit I'm going to have a play with and see about putting some in my Imperial Guard army as feudal-themed Ogrens. Should look cool. Anyhow, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you very much, folks. You are the ones who keep me doing this mad nonsense. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all and you all enjoy the rest of your day.